so devastating. Oh my days. Ever since I was a kid, I've loved the Miles Davis album, Milestones, and the standout first track, Dr. Jekyll, features this double sax battle between Cannibal Adderley on alto and John Coltrane on tenor. We're gonna look at Cannibal Adderley's contribution today. I'm gonna to break it down and we're gonna discover why he is the absolute goat when it comes to burning fast blues bebop. Okay, let's get straight into this absolutely devastating solo by Cannibal Adley. Remember, of course, that he's trading courses with John Coltrane, but today <laughs> we're only looking at the Cannibal Adley bit. The Coltrane bit is, of course, absolutely mega as well, but that is for another day. Let's look at Cannibal's first chorus. Remember, in alto pitch, this is a blues in D. Now, you can see here on the chart that I've marked these hits because the, the drums go boom and boom. So you can really um, lock into where the drums start. The, the drums play hits on one and four before Cannon comes in. This is very, very fast indeed. Here we go. <laughs> Oh my word. Let's slow it down a bit so you can hear it at some sort of reasonable speed. Absolutely blinding. <laughs> That's what that is. Absolutely blinding. So let's break this down. I'll play it for you a little bit slower so you can sort of get the feeling of what it's like at a sort of human tempo. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Now what Cannibal Adderley doesn't typically do through this whole solo is play, you know, your average blues sound. It goes past very quickly and there's a lot of chromatic passing notes, a bit of bebop language and a lot of inspiration. So if you look at this first chorus, you can see that we've got these passing notes going down here from E all the way down to C. And then we've got some bebop language um, for the next little section, which is quite typical. And if you look, uh, if you look at this section here, look, once again, he's doing the same, he's doing the same thing. So if I put one there, then this is also one. He does exactly the same lick, but let's fill in the gaps there on that little bebop section. <laughs> So again, lots of uh, this is a, this is a pattern that he uses quite a lot through the solo, and again more chromaticism, going all the way chromatically up from um, a, a sharp to B to C to C sharp to D, and then back down. And it's only when we get to here, the very last interval, that he breaks the actual chromatic scale sound. And that is, of course, the sort of uh, D7 bebop scale at the top. And then moving on to the final... <laughs> Remember, there's only two phrases in this chorus. Some of the choruses only have one phrase because <laughs> it goes past so fast. Now, moving on to the next phrase, we've got more chromaticism. This time we're going for E, E flat, D, D... And then there's uh, uh, a one step in this, little, in this little line, which isn't fully chromatic, okay? That step in the middle. Then we get a nice little bit of sort of a standard bebop language here on the E minor seven. And then another passage of chromaticism. So we're going down from C to B to B flat to A. Now there's a one tone step there again. And this is a feature of what Cannibal does, he does lots of chromaticism, but then he breaks up those chromatic runs with a leap of a whole tone instead of chromatic. So all chromatic down to there. 
a whole stone leap. And then look, we've got this G minus seven. Now look, we're back to chord one here. It's supposed to be D seven, but we've got a G minus seven arpeggio. Then we've got this chromatic enclosure to A. So you've got this chromatic enclosure which leads to the A. And then straight up an F triad, which is really weird because it's supposed to be, you know, the, the turnaround is E minus seven, A seven back to D, but he plays an F triad. And then this chromatic rundown from C sharp, resolving back to this D. And it's not a D seven sound, he plays a D major seven sound. And this is something that he does throughout the whole solo, actually. So the final line there, go from the beginning of the final line. Absolutely brilliant. So let's hear this whole chorus again. Now, just before we play it, one of the big features of how, how Cannonball plays at this tempo is accenting certain notes, ghosting the rest of the notes. So he really brings out a couple of the notes and doesn't get bogged down in, in his phrasing. There's a lot of ghosted notes. So that's a real feature of what Cannonball plays on this. So let's check it out the first chorus one more time. Then it's into Cold Chain's first chorus. Right, let's move it on now. Hey, so I've actually got a free download available for the PDF of Cannibals playing on Dr. Jekyll. Just use the link that you can see there, fill in your email, and you've got the free PDF transcription of everything that Cannibal plays on Dr. Jekyll. It's absolutely awesome. So go and get it now, and you can even print it off and follow along as we go through the rest of the solo. He starts off with this absolutely awesome bluesy phrase which you'll hear him play quite a lot um, in other contexts as well. It goes like this. I could hardly even play it fast enough. I'll be the first to admit Technically, this is on the very limit of what I can possibly play. Here's Cannibal playing it. <laughs> now, this final bit, this final bit is a bit indistinct. You can't really hear what he's doing there. But it starts off with a great, with a, that great blues phrase. And if you learn nothing else from this solo, there is just an awesome blues lick right there. And then moving on, we've got this chromatic slip sliding stuff here. And then we've got this, uh, so this is all kind of chromatic in that bar there. But working its way back to the third of D7. Then we got a great lick here. Which doesn't make a lot of harmonic sense, really. Especially seeing this ending on the ending on the C, which doesn't fit any of the, the G stuff. But that's what you find in this solo. There's a lot of stuff which is just thrown over the chords. It's not necessarily that valuable to look at every chord symbol to see what he plays. It's this kind of, you know, volley of notes that come at you with absolute percussion, precision, great ideas, um, you know, like a bullet out of a gun. And sometimes, you know, the notes don't necessarily fit the chord. It doesn't matter in the slightest, you know, it's just it's just a vibe. <laughs> right, now that's, that is more into chromatic stuff here. Uh, this is all kind of chromatic slip sliding, a bit like the bar above, really. Um, 
And then again, more sort of chromatic slip sliding, but resolving bang on the root of the 251 chord. Then we've got this great 251 lick here. <laughs> And it resolves two beats later. So this whole thing resolves here with this chromatic enclosure, which is leading to the resolution point. But it, um, the, chord, the, the chord resolution is delayed. Um, and this bit here, you know, running up here is more like the diminished, it's more like a diminished scale, which is really cool. So when you put that whole chorus together, But let's hear can and play it. <laughs> Absolutely devastating that is. Absolutely devastatingly good. Let's move on to the third chorus now. And he starts off with this beautiful melodic uh, D major phrase, no, no D7 about it. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So look, the whole chorus is one breath. <laughs> The whole chorus is one breath. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So melodic. <laughs> and um, this whole D majorness suddenly resolves with this C natural, which really kind of spells out the, you know, the. Um, Sorry, I went a little bit off the chart there. C natural. Wow, what is up with my writing? C natural. <laughs> um, which really spells out the chords. So he does really nail the harmony through this solo, combined with all this sort of melodic stuff and all his punch and ghosting and, you know, really rhythmically punchy stuff and even a really good smattering of blues in there as well. And this, is, this chorus demonstrates it all. There's some absolutely fantastic phrases in this. Look at the second line. Now there's a lot of displacement going on here because this phrase here is almost like the D7, okay? Because you've got 13 going to sharp five and all kind of voice leads to the third of the G chord here, the B. Now instead of G7, he's playing a G major, he's playing a G major seven sound. And then here he goes to a G minor sound, which is quite often what you get in the, uh, you, normally bar five, you get a G major, sometimes you get a G minor, but he's pushed the whole thing a bar later. So G major, then the G minor, and then that resolves to the third. What would have been the third of the D chord here? But <laughs> it's a bar later, and it smoothly transitions into the, the uh, F sharp minor seven to B seven lick here. <laughs> And then the whole thing rounds off with that beautiful finish, the beautiful sort of bluesy sound around here in the final bar. So let's listen to Cannon play this chorus. Oh, 
<laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. So let's hear that. Except he plays it up a hundred times better than me, obviously. Yeah. Right. So let's move on to the next chorus now. Now, I've actually done a whole video on the lick at the start of this chorus, which I shall link, <laughs> which I shall quickly link above now on the card. But this pattern sounds really out. It's just a, it's really just a scale pattern that starts from the fifth, and it goes down to the fourth, and then it goes to the third. Um, and you know, it, it's it's a scale pattern that goes down. It's quite a, it's quite a simple pattern, really. That's what it would do if it reached its ultimate conclusion, but it doesn't. He just does it for a little bit and then branches back off. But I guarantee you that is something that he had under his fingers. So let's hear Cannibal play this chorus before we comment on it. <laughs> and then Coltrane really ups the ante at that point. It's brilliant. So I'll play it a bit slower for you. Oh, I should mention that there's a cross here on my chart because I'm pretty sure that he fingers a G, but what happens is that the D harmonic is the actual note that comes out. So what he, what happens is this. But what he's fingering is this. And I love that last phrase there. What a great way to end the chorus. So let's hear Cannon play this one more time. And it just sounds so out, doesn't it? It sounds really outside. And it's just a, a kind of diatonic major scale pattern. But then he's back to his usual, his usual chromatic tricks here. The, here's a passage of chromaticism all the way down there. Again, we have this chromatic enclosure leading to A. He's done that several times in the solo um, so far, that particular enclosure to A. Um, and, you know, backing up to here again, we see these chromatic passages combined with diatonic passages. So there's a diatonic bit and there's the chromatic bit following it. I mean, how good is that? It's so melodic. Da -da -da -ba -da 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 <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. And then we've got this great uh, three six lick here. That's just kind of standard bebop. Cannibal loves playing with the major thirds and the minor thirds. And this lick is a great example of it right here. It's going uh, from the minor third to the major third to the fourth to the minor third to the major third. And like I said, that absolutely awesome finishing lick there. Let's hear Cannon play this chorus one more time. So actually, when you slow it down, it just sounds like quite melodic. Some of it, a lot of it, sounds like quite melodic bebop at the right tempo. You know, 
know, you can you can hear a lot of players like Hank Mobley or whatever play this line, but at that speed, it's insane. <laughs> Way too fast for me and my sloppy technique. <laughs> oh man, it's just too good, isn't it? But remember, you can get your piece of Cannibal Adley. Go and get your free PDF transcription using the link there. Print it off, frame it, put it on the wall. <laughs> it's that good. Okay, let's finish off the solo. Okay, moving on to the fifth chorus. This is all the things that we've seen so far in this chorus, we've got these beautiful major scale melodic fragments, which we're gonna see here on the first two bars. Then we've got some extended chromaticism through the next section. We've got some standard bebop stuff, we're back to the chromaticism. Um, and then we've got some more bebop and this fantastic final phrase. So without further ado, let's hear it canon play at full speed. And that last lick, that last lick is just so beautiful. What a great way to finish a chorus. Check this out. So uh, he is, of course, going down an A7 augmented arpeggio there. So beautiful and melodic. And then the other fantastic part of this this final line is here, where he's doing this guy tone down to the ninth of the key. So even at this breakneck tempo of some, you know, 300 beats a minute, Cannonball is still finding the time and eking out these beautiful melodic phrases, even at this speed. Let's hear him play the chorus one more time. <laughs> so let's look now at the, uh, from here, because we've got the A minor sound here going up. Then there's the chromatic passage where he goes, chromatic down from B to B flat to A. Then it's, it's actually chromatic all the way down to G sharp. Then there's a step of a tone, another step of a tone, and then it's chromatic all the way down to C. So once again, we see this, this uh, device where he's doing chromatic runs, but th with the tone interval thrown in strategically, almost like bebop scales linked with chromatic notes. Great stuff. So we've got the kind of bebop sound here. Then it like threatens, you know, just just for a minute, it threatens to be G minor through there. Sorry, that's kind of in the way, isn't it? Look at my weird G. So G minor there. Ba, ba, ba. And then it's back into the chromatic stuff. So chromatic D flat to C to B to B flat to A. This is all chromatic, but then we've got our step of a tone and then it's chromatic again. So we're seeing this pattern again. Now he's got this little turn here using the um, the side D, and then we're into the final phrase. So I'll play the whole, the whole chorus.
Let's hear Canna play it one more time. Simple as that, folks. Cannonball's just like, no problem. Next. <laughs> right. Let's look at his final chorus. Now, this one is interesting. So, look what we've got here. We've got E flat. We've got A flat. We've got D flat. See what's happening? We're going around the cycle of the cycle of fourths or fifths. We've got F sharp. We've got B. So straight round the cycle of fifths. <laughs> but when he plays it in the context that he does, at that point in the solo, it's absolutely devastating. Okay, so check out this. <laughs> that's it it's all over and it's nice because it overlaps with what Coltrane finishes in his previous chorus look it kind of emerges out and that's one of the other things about the this um trading section cannonball's got that lovely warm rich sound and quite often plays lower down in the range of the alto train's got that sort of strident um more cutting sound and he plays higher on the tenor so the two often sound quite similar to each other right so let's play this a little bit slower break it down <laughs> So this whole last line is really just pretty standard bebop. Um, but we've got some more chromaticism up here. All these notes are going straight chromatic down to the G. Um, then we've got more chromaticism leading down from the E to the D. We've got this G minor triad thrown in. Now you'll notice that he's done this quite a bit, the sort of G minor to G major to G minor-ish stuff going on at this point in the chorus. Then we've got a bit more kind of standard bebop after that. So I'll play the second line. Absolutely awesome stuff. Let's hear kind of play this chorus again. <laughs> that is so devastating. Oh my days. So there we have it. There's Cannibal's six choruses. And of course, you've got all that other Coltrane stuff to enjoy as well. It's just devastatingly good playing. And at that tempo, not only is it um, technically virtuosic, but he's melodic. He's got these awesome substitutions. He plays burning bebop. He keeps coming up with new ideas. He's bluesy. He makes the changes at the same time. I mean, there's just, wow. This is just the highest level <laughs> you can imagine of uh, improvising on saxophone. So that is all we've got time for this week. I really hope you enjoyed delving into Cannonball's burning alto solo on Dr. Jekyll. Last time, remember, you can get your free PDF transcription using the link that you can see right there. As usual, there'll be a whole bonus video inside the Inner Circle membership. So uh, use the link there to get your free seven day trial for that. It's absolutely awesome. Thank you, you coffee buyers. I really appreciate the coffee. Should have been a... Um, should have been a merch, get your sacks together merch mug, and it wasn't, so fail. All right, <laughs> until next week, <laughs> practice hard, practice smart.
and enjoy your music. Take it easy, guys. God, it's... <laughs> I'm in the middle of recording, sorry. Oh, that's totally thrown me off my game. Right. <laughs> <laughs>